She leaned forward, setting the lamp on a shelf to the left of the doorframe, then picked up a candle to light a few other spots as well. The light did nothing to wash away the horror. Four men lay restrained on pallets, each suffering from the same affliction. All were bone thin, with skin hanging from the peaks and joints of their skeletons like rags on a line, and all were boasting a set of cankerous sores around the mouth and nose. It was difficult to see, but it looked to Mercy like their skin had a yellowish tinge, as if the kidneys or liver were the root of the problem. It looked familiar, or rather it looked like the logical conclusion of something familiar. Weezers. Mrs. Gaines looked at her strangely, but did not ask any questions yet. One man stirred. The other three simply lay there, either sleeping or dying. That's Irvin. He's the one in the best condition. You might actually get a few words out of him. He's more lucid than the rest. And you took him in like this? With the wounded veterans and alcoholics? The symptoms were gentler when these men arrived, but things deteriorated so quickly. At first we thought we had a plague on our hands, but it became clear within a few weeks that the ailment is self-inflicted. The best I can ascertain is that there's some form of drug that's becoming common out on the lines, making its way both north and south amongst the foot soldiers. You know how they trade amongst themselves. They call it sap, or sometimes yellow sap. Though I've heard other designations for it, too. Sick sand, grit. Mercy took the lamp and sat down beside Irvin. He did seem to be the least afflicted. She'd seen it before, the hue of his skin and dull crust of his sores. But this went well beyond anything she'd encountered in the Robertson. This was something else, or something more extensive. Have you ever seen anything like it? Maybe. Irvin turned his neck so that he faced her direction, but whether he was curious or simply delirious, it was hard to tell. His lids cracked open, revealing squishy, yellowish eyeballs that had all the life of half-cooked egg whites. Hello there, Irvin. Mercy thought the cadaverous lad might have nodded, so she took this as encouragement. Irvin, I'm going to... I'm going to examine you a little bit and see if I can't... help. He did not protest so she brought the lamp closer and used it to determine that his pupils were only scarcely reacting to the light, and he did not flinch or fuss when she turned his head to the side to peer into the canal of his nearest ear, which was clotted like a pollen-laden flower. His ears have been leaking like that for days now. I don't think it bodes well for him. I mean, you can see the other gentlemen have the same problem. It's like dried-up paste. Good Lord, look at those sores! They must hurt like hell. One would think. It looks almost like... like the crust from sun poisoning. Mrs. Gaines, I assume these men are regularly turned over and cleaned? We pay some of our Negro washwomen extra to come up here and perform those duties. But this isn't a hospital. We don't have staff that's prepared or qualified to do such things. Irvin? Irvin, I'm Nurse Mercy, and I need you to talk to me. Uh, Nurse? Irvin? You've been taking something that's terrible bad for you, haven't you? Sap. Need. No, you don't need it, you silly man. You don't need it, and you can't have it either. But I want you to tell me about it. Where did you get it? Irvin rolled his face away, but Mercy caught him by the jaw, keeping her fingers well away from his mouth. Irvin, answer me. Where did you get the sap? Friend. Where did your friend get it? All right. Well, tell me this. Do you smoke it like opium or eat it or sniff it up your nose? Sap. Which friend's been giving it to you? Tell me that much. Bill Saunders. Bill Saunders? I know the man myself. I've given him blankets and food for these last few months, and this is how he repays me. Irvin, where does Bill Saunders get it? What is it made of? Well, guess it West. Mercy turned to Mrs. Gaines to ask if there were any men from the Western Territories present. In the short instant that her gaze was directed elsewhere, Irvin's head leaped up off the striped pillow, and his jaw snapped, making a vicious grab for the nurse's lingering fingers. Without thinking, Mercy caught him upside the face in a hard right hook. His bid for human flesh had failed, and now he was unconscious, but Mercy clutched both hands against her bosom.